Hello and welcome to the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event today. I'm Jennifer, your facilitator. We have some fantastic schools. I'm really excited for you to get a sneak peek at all they have to offer. But before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for all of our rep representatives to answer. Maybe you're looking for a certain major or out of class activity. You can also direct your question to a specific school by including the name of the school with your question so the representative knows you're hoping to hear from them. This is just one of many different sessions that have happened as part of the CASDA programming. We hope you enjoyed our earlier sessions as well. This presentation, like all of the earlier presentations, is being recorded. They will all be available in the coming days at the same website where you registered, strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y, and you can also see that on your screen. I'm really excited to turn it over to our first presenter to get us started today. We're going to be learning all about Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Kevin? Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Kevin Rivenberg, and I'm the Director of Admissions at Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. And I, along with my seven colleagues, are would be a dedicated admissions counselor for students. We want to make sure that we are an advocate, an advisor, and help schedule and concierge for any of your questions and visits to us, be it virtually or in person. So I want to talk a little bit about who we are as an institution a little bit about our majors, some of your next steps, just to make sure that you have an efficient and effective college process. So ACPHS was founded in 1881 in Albany, New York, as part of Union University, along with Albany Medical College, Albany Law School, and Union College, with whom we have a lot of reciprocal and joint programs. Um, all of our mo majors have a central focus on healthcare. So if you think about how somebody stays well, gets sick, gets diagnosed, gets treated for disease, that's really our wheelhouse. We only have about 1,200 students between our undergraduate, master's, and doctoral programs with a nine to one student to faculty ratio, ensuring that we offer you a rich and intimate close-knit community. Recently, through the National Institutes of Health, through, um, through the um, and variety of different national institutions, we've been ranked the number one for value, value added and return on investment, noting specifically the high career outcomes and salaries for alumni, specifically related to the amount that they spend with us in terms of time and effort and money. So let's talk a little bit about some of our different academic programs that we have. The nice thing is that we only have a handful of programs that you can start with us when you join us out of high school. So we have bachelor's degrees in laboratory areas such as biomedical technology, microbiology, and clinical laboratory sciences. For those of you that are interested in drug development, we also have a degree in pharmaceutical science. For those of you that are interested in the social and economic aspects of health, public health, and then our flagship six-year doctor of pharmacy program, or PharmD. What we're also known for a lot of our partnership programs where our students have special treatment where they can complete an MD program, a DO program, a PA program, or even a law program in less time minus graduate testing requirements um, and with preferential treatment from a lot of partners. So beyond the degrees that we offer by ourselves at ACPHS, we're happy to offer and excited to offer joint programs at Albany Medical College, SUNY Upstate, LECOM, NYIT, and Albany Law, amongst many others. So what should you be thinking about um, when you be a student with us? It's not just about our major, but also about those things that round out your experience and develop you as a human so you can have upward mobility and really be a leader in the future of healthcare. Our clubs and organizations, athletics, residence life, community service. So just because you wanna study something serious and professional in nature doesn't mean that you have to do that at um, the expense of student life experience. And we also wanna make sure that you are successful. So all of our students have access to free and comprehensive tutoring, advising, mentoring, experiential education, which is a synonym for clerkships, co-ops, or, or internships or externships, and career services. So 
So what might be next for you, depending if you're a junior, a senior, ready to apply, um, we have three different application cycles over the next year or cycle, it's November, December, and February 1st, depending on where you fall in our process and where we fall in your preferences. Currently, we're SAT and ACT optional for the rest of 2022, um, but still require a transcript and a letter of recommendation. In lieu of that, we do offer these Discover Your Potential meetings, which are an opportunity for you to introduce yourself to us as a college and vice versa, because we have limited access to materials because of the ongoing pandemic. We do have weekly and monthly um, virtual info sessions. We have open houses every fall and we'll be happy to starting to host some of our accepted student days just in the upcoming months. So I thank you everybody for your time. I'll be here for the rest of the duration of the session and feel free to send me a private chat or a group chat and I'm happy to connect with you. Thanks and have a great night. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kevin, for starting us off and presenting on the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. We're on to school number two. We're going to be learning all about Alfred University. All right. Thank you all, uh, Jennifer, and welcome, everyone. First of all, welcome to Saxon Country. My name is Kathy Torrey, and I'm an Associate Director of Admission from Alfred University. And I'm gonna walk you through a general overview of some of the amazing opportunities you'll find here at Alfred University. We've been around for quite a while. We were founded in 1836 and are actually the second oldest co-educational institution in the country. We were inclusive from the start, welcoming international students, of, uh, students of color and indigenous students well before many other schools were doing so in the country. We're located in the beautiful southern tier of western New York. The village of Alfred is a picturesque rural setting and is unique because it's actually home to two colleges. Not only Alfred University, but Alfred New York also is home to SUNY Alfred State. If you've never made it out to our neck of the woods before, here's a map of campus. You can easily walk from one end of the campus to the other in about 10 minutes, depending on how fast you walk. If you know what you'd like to study, that's great. And if not, there's no need to worry. One of the many reasons for attending college is to figure out what your passions are and to explore different avenues for careers. Our campus has a community feel with only 1800 students with our average class size of about 18 and we have a 13 to one student faculty ratio. From our Center for Academic Success with tutoring services and individualized plans for student achievement to our Career Development Center to help you find internships and jobs, you will leave AU with the skills to make an impact on the world. Of course, it starts with academics, so let's take a look at our four academic units. In the School of Art and Design, you'll create without constraint in a supportive, multidisciplinary environment that encourages creativity, research, and travel. You won't major in a particular uh, medium, so your BFA degree will actually be quite comprehensive. You'll work in an interdisciplinary curriculum that allows you to explore all types of mediums. The Performing Arts Division houses two majors and several minors as seen here. Our facilities are spectacular and you really have to see them when you visit campus. Our programs are designed to be inclusive for all skill stages and abilities, and we encourage students to develop their skills at all mastery levels. Our School of Engineering offers the six majors that are listed here. As you can see, we have some really unique programs like glass engineering and material science. It's hands-on learning from the beginning at Alfred University. We have over 80,000 square feet of lab space where students get to learn, create, and explore their passions. You will interact with world-renowned professors in small classrooms right from the start. The College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is actually our largest of the four colleges and schools with the most academic major options and students enrolled. Students choose to study from over 60 majors and minors and have opportunities for research, hands-on learning, and travel. The Liberal Arts and Science College is also proud to have an active Phi Beta Kappa chapter and a fantastic honors program open to students from all of our academic areas. Our College of Business offers numerous majors and minors such as marketing, health planning and management, and data analytics. There's also a four plus one master's uh, of business administration option that many of our students will take advantage of. Our business students are actually launching their own businesses from campus, as well as working with our local international and, inter and national companies uh, on different projects and internships. They really do travel around the globe to enrich their classroom experiences. We are proudly holders of the AACSB accreditation, which is an honor achieved by fewer than 5% of business colleges worldwide. Now let's see what happens outside of the classroom. 
The college experience is only what you will make it. Our students are involved in the community of Alfred University and Alfred, New York. We have more than 80 student-led options, such as outdoor clubs, service organizations, and cultural programs. We offer 22 Division III varsity athletic teams, along with several club and intramural options. You won't really be bored at Alfred University unless you want to be. We're a residential college. Living in a residence hall is part of the educational experience, just like going to class. You'll meet other people, encounter new ideas, overcome differences, and develop long-lasting relationships. There are all types of residential options to fulfill our three-year residency requirement. Our dining options range from a full serve all you can eat style to grab and go. There's lots to choose from right on campus along with several local restaurants in Alfred and surrounding towns like Cornell and Wellsville. We even offer cooking classes through our community table which is located in our campus center. Now I'll take a quick look at our application process. We accept the common application or our Alfred University application and it's always free to apply to Alfred. We have an early action which has passed uh, for, for your juniors out there if you're getting ready, uh, but our regular decision deadline is a February 1 preferred. We are rolling otherwise. We are also test optional for SAT or ACT. We require the high school transcript, a letter of recommendation, and your essay. And if you're going to be applying to the School of Art and Design, we also require an art portfolio of 15 to 20 pieces. Financial aid and scholarships, 98% of our students receive some sort of financial aid. We uh, start looking at FAFSAs from October and we're moving on those now. And merit scholarships will be awarded at the time of acceptance. So when you receive an acceptance letter from Alfred University, you will also know what your merit scholarship will be, which is a four-year scholarship. I wanna thank you for your time. We encourage you to come visit. We are open. You can meet with faculty, staff, coaches, current students and alumni. We're really here to help you uh, to make sure that you have a full experience. So please come and visit us and find out why you'll have an outside of ordinary experience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for presenting on Alfred University. We're moving on to our next school. We're gonna be learning all about Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Hi everyone, I'm Kendra Costin. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions at Hobart and William Smith. Let me share my screen with you. That way we can get started. Just kind of like the institutions that came before me, we are also a small private liberal arts um, institution. And the one big difference is that we are right on Seneca Lake. So we are in Geneva, New York, in upstate New York, um, right on one of the second largest uh, Finger Lakes. Um, you can see here um, our big dome in the background, kind of hard to talk about um, <laughs> with the picture, but we'll get started. Um, we'll talk to you about three areas today, academics, the community, and how we prepare you for after uh, college, because we are thinking about that for you. We do a really good job of having close-knit um, great our connections with your professors. We have about 15 to 16 students in a classroom, less than 2000 students on campus. And just like Alfred, we are all residential. Um, we have added two master's programs this year, which I'm sure you'll maybe be interested in later uh, down the line, but that includes master's in management and teaching and education. Um, we uh, follow sort of a, a different kind of curriculum system here at uh, HWS. We follow something called the eight goals. Um, that centers on some skills that we feel are gonna help you be successful after graduating and in, in helping you succeed in the job, in the career force. So instead of um, building a schedule based on requirements that you feel like you have to take, you're really gonna be building a schedule based on your interests and they're just going to happen to organically satisfy um, these skills like critical thinking, communication, social awareness, things like that, which is pretty unique. Um, we do a really great job with study abroad. Um, we have over, I would say 60% of our student body does study abroad. We contract with over 30 countries. Um, and I think a big reason why we are so popular with study abroad is we do have a lot of faculty led programs. We are going abroad with some of your uh, professors from HWS, getting education from them and also from your home-based schools. Um, we also take financial aid uh, when you study abroad, so you're not having to pay anything after, which is pretty awesome. Just kind of a picture of how we are situated um, all over the world, and this list is ever-changing. 
community service is a big part about who we are. 100% of our students do some type of community service, and that starts right when you get on campus as your first day of service, the freshman day of service. We have a whole bunch of centers on campus. Um, in other words, they're offices, but they're really integrated into the life of HWS. So the center called CECL, it's an acronym that stands for Community um, Engagement and Service Learning, houses all of our community service options. Um, you'll see around here that we do a big, uh, big push to clean up the community around us. Um, because we are on a smaller scale, and the one thing you have to know about Geneva, New York, is it is pretty small as well, but we're not short of any activities or anything like that. We do make it a point to clean up the community that you are a part of. We're adding a whole bunch of new sports to athletics. Um, this includes esports this year. We just added uh, volleyball will be coming soon, and we've added bowling. Um, and we do do a great job of preparing you for after after college. Um, we have something called the Pathways Program through our Career Development Center. If you go through our Pathways Program, which is going to help you prepare for internships, interviews, preparing you with um, how to build your resume and cover letters. We guarantee you uh, an internship in your field of study while you're at HWS. And we also guarantee you that that opportunity is paid. If the opportunity is underpaid or not paid at all, we'll give you a stipend. So that really helps for students who might want to live on campus in the summer or um, live farther away, you're able to uh, get paid to do that. And just some kind of stats here, but we do have a whole bunch of merit options as well as uh, aid based on uh, need, based on FAFSA. Um, so just to look at some admissions side of things, we did add early action this year that has since passed. Um, we are working up to our second early decision round, which is January 15th. Um, of course, that is binding, so we are still selecting those, as well as February 1st regular decision. We take the Common App, um, and we have two kind of special things about our application. One, we are a test optional school. We've been test optional for 15 years. We have a choice on our application called HWS Choice, which means that that allows you to um, have your admissions counselor decide if you want to accept your scores or not. So if you're not sure, either way, we're a no harm school, so you could always submit your scores, and we could decide if those are going to help you. Um, and that is kind of all about that. And here is my information if you would like to get in contact with me. Best way to reach me is through email at costinahws.edu or through the text line. Um, we are trying to work from home this week. So uh, if you need to follow up with me, you can text or email me. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to answering any questions if you have them. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kendra, for presenting on Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Just a reminder to our attendees, the Q&A box, the Q&A button is the place to go if you have some questions for the schools that have already presented or the schools that are coming up. If there's something more you want to know to personalize this sneak peek, because remember, six minutes is only a small peek at what each one of these amazing schools have to offer. And as you can see on the screen, our next school that we're going to be hearing all about is Manhattanville College. Megan, take it away. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Testoni, and I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Manhattanville College. And of course, my slide's going to pause. There we go. Um, so Manhattanville College was founded in 1841. Um, we are a private co-educational institution. Um, the wonderful thing about us is our location. We are 30 miles north of New York City, which is awesome. Um, allows for our students to have easy access, but still have that home base as a campus. We have about 1,500 undergraduate students, and they are from over 40 different countries and 35 different states. Um, we, have do, we do have small class sizes, so our average class size is about 19. The largest class size our students would be in would be about 30, 35, and our overall student-teacher ratio is about 10 to 1. We have a beautiful 100-acre campus. It all is enclosed. Um, there's no need to leave campus, but we are very close to White Plains, which is a major city nearby, um, and a lot of our students take advantage of being so close to that city. Here are all of our programs. Um, so Manhattanville offers over 40 different um, programs that you can choose from to study. We have a little bit of everything, which is nice being a liberal arts school. The nice thing about a liberal arts education is that our students can not only do what they're passionate about, but they also have the option to obviously focus on their careers while, you know, involving in their passions. Um, we do have a brand new radiologic technologies program that is in our School of Nursing and Health Sciences. I um, mean, we're really excited about that. And nursing launched about three years ago. We have 100% pass rate um, for our tests, which is great. 
the nice thing about being um, a Manhattanville student is we have a lot of individual support offered to our students on campus. Um, we have one-on-one um, -on -one subject based tutoring. We have group tutoring, which I think is really nice because a lot of our students, you know, feel like maybe they don't want to ask a question, um, but the, the group tutoring allows them to hear from their peers, um, which is awesome. We have a free writing center. And the other wonderful thing is we have two fee-based um, academic accommodation services, which we're known for in our area, um, including our Valiant Learning Support Program and Pathways and Connections programs. We have a wonderful center for career development. Being so close to the city allows for our students to have over 600 different internship opportunities. Um, students have them in Manhattan, we're near MasterCard, Pepsi. Um, we also offer them in Greenwich, um, Stanford, Connecticut, as well as, as well as Westchester. We do mock interviews, which is awesome. We also have career and internship fairs regularly. And even during this COVID pandemic, we've been doing virtual fairs for our students. We also do personality testing, as well as um, resume building, cover letter building. And then we also help our students students make connections when they need to. We have a fantastic Castle Honors Program. So if you do qualify, we do let you know, but you have benefits of being, um, you know, being able to take extra classes and things like that, which I think are fantastic opportunities for students who really want to jumpstart their education. We guarantee housing for all four years, which is great. We do not have a residency requirement, but you are allowed to commute or live on campus and you are guaranteed for all four years. We have four different options. All of them have on-site washers and dryers and they're very close to our academic buildings, which are really great. Athletics. So Manhattanville offers 23 Division three sports. This year, we just added women's rugby, which we're really excited about. All of our sports besides our ice rink are right on campus. So we have, um, all kinds of athletic events not only offered for our students who are on the varsity teams, um, but they're also available for all of our students across the board. We have a very robust intramurals program. And if you're not sure intramurals is, it's a way for our students to be active and involved on campus, but not have to be on a sport. Um, we have a dome, we have two turf fields, we have weight rooms. Um, it's a really nice way to be involved. We do yoga, boot camps, everything. Um, and then our ice rink is a short 10 minute drive and we offer um, shuttle buses to get our students to our men's women's ice hockey games. We have tons of different clubs, over 40 different clubs. We do campus events um, every semester. Even during COVID, we've been doing things very safe, socially distant, um, and we pride ourselves on making sure that our students can be as involved as possible on campus. So our application process, Manhattanville does offer um, the Common App or our own Manhattanville application, whatever is you're more comfortable with. Um, we do require two letters of recommendation, um, just your transcript and then we are a test optional school. Um, so we do not require the SATs or the ACTs and that's included for our um, nursing and health science programs. We do not need your test scores for those either. Merit scholarships, um, our merit scholarships range between 16 to $22,000. Um, you do receive that when you receive an acceptance letter in the mail or via your portal, which is really nice. And then from there, financial aid gets added on top of that. Um, for our students, we recommend that you do submit your FAFSA if you haven't yet and you've already applied, um, but we encourage that as we also give out some other scholarships as well. So our Clark Community Service Scholarship, our students do um, have done over 33,000 hours of community service, which is awesome. Um, so you can complete that and you get an additional scholarship. Our Castle Honors Scholarship is also offered to our students. Legacies, if you are a um, student of an alum, or um, we have our Manhattanville Achievement Program, which is similar to HGOP on campus. And if you feel like you'd be a good fit for that, I'd love to give you some more information. Then we offer a really fantastic program for first-gen students. A lot of students nowadays are first-generation and we like to make sure that our students are you know, being supported all the way through the process, not just through the application process. But if you guys have any questions, I'll put my information in the chat um, and I'd be happy to speak with you. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much, Megan, for sharing Manhattanville College. We're on to our next school. We're going to be hearing from Marist College. Hey, everyone. Sorry for the glare. Uh, obviously, I am from Marist College. Uh, let me just share my screen really quick, and then we can get going. Um, open audio. Awesome. And then we will present. So like I said, I am with Marist College. My name is Nicholas Gerard, and I'm an admission counselor there. And I actually also was a student and just graduated in May. So I feel like I have like a unique perspective to kind of hit on both ends of the spectrum. So getting started, we are located in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is actually a short hour drive from the city and or Albany, which is really great, New York City. Uh, we also have a train station about three minutes down from campus, so it provides really convenient access and it brings you right into the Grand Central Terminal in Manhattan. So 
you know, we have a bunch of different internship opportunities and a bunch of different really opportunities for however you really want to utilize the city, which is really great. We are located as well on the river, um, which is really nice as most of the buildings on campus kind of face the river. So it gives you a really nice view uh, when you're in class or just walking on campus and our students really love it. There's even a riverfront park that's right on the water as you can see. So it gives students a nice opportunity to kind of unwind and you know relax after maybe a hard day of classes or tests or what have you. Some quick facts about Marist College. We are a small to mid-sized institution as we have about 5,500 undergraduate students at a given year. We also do offer just over 40 different majors and we also have just over 900 different graduate students in 15 different graduate programs. So I believe there's kind of a nice mix of different education levels on campus, which is great. We are also a very diverse student body as we have students com um, coming here from over 40 different states or almost 60 different countries, which is really great. And being that we are a small to mid-sized school, we do have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio with about an average class size of 20 to 25. So you really get to have that personal relationship with your professors. We are highly residential as well with about 96% of freshmen living on campus and about 90% of students staying on campus for all four years. However, commuters are of course also welcome. And two of the statistics that we're most proud of are our graduation rate, as we have an 85% graduation rate, which is over the national average for both public and private institutions. And one of the things I'm most proud of is that our graduates within six months of graduation, about 97% of them are either employed or enrolled in graduate school. So they really go on to achieve great things, which is awesome. As I mentioned, we do have over 40 different majors. And if you want more specific major information uh, on our website, there's actually a blurb for every single major and every subset of it. So if you want more detailed information, uh, you can visit our website to find that. We do also put an emphasis on hands-on learning as we like to say that it's an integration of theory and practice, which really just means, you know, we want you to learn in the classroom and then take what you've learned and apply it to really whatever you wanna do with it uh, career-wise. We pride ourselves on having state-of-the-art facilities that mimic the internship experience on campus, which is really great to get that hands-on experience like I mentioned. However, internships themselves are also very important and we wanna make it as easy as possible for you to secure these. So as I mentioned, our proximity to New York City allows for us to do pr some pretty unique things. We have a Marist Manhattan program where we have apartments on the Upper East Side that students can stay in for the entire semester and do full-time internship work, which is really great. And in terms of securing these internships, our career services department uh, helps students a lot. Every week they send a ton of different internship opportunities right to your email sorted by major. So you can just scroll down and apply in your pajamas, which is pretty great. We also have about two to four career fairs per year. And we also have internship coordinators that would love to meet with you, fix your resume, even do mock interviews with you and then record them so you can see what you did well and maybe what you can improve on. One of the programs we also like to emphasize is our study abroad program. And you can go to over 70 different locations, but our favorite is of course our full-fledged campus in Florence, Italy. Uh, we're actually the only US accredited institution that has a full-fledged campus there. So it's really great because you can go there for all four years if you've wanted and graduate with a Marist degree that's American. So it's a really great opportunity for you to maybe, you know, both visit another country and get that experience of that culture while still working towards your degree. We have a lot of events going on on campus as well. We have a very, a very, a very uh, participated in uh, theater program that's currently burgeoning, which is great. We also have, are a D1 school and have about 23 Division I teams, which is uh, really fun to go to the games and things like that. We also offer intramural and club sports that are more my speed personally, uh, really just as an opportunity for you to kind of unwind and relax. And we also offer a bunch of different student activities such as cheap movie tickets, Broadway tickets, really whatever you want to do, we want to give you the opportunity to do so. In terms of deadlines, of course, our first one passed. However, we do have our early decision two deadline coming up on February 1st. And of course, our regular decision deadline that's on March 1st. And in terms of figures from admitted students, these are just an average. We on average accept an 87 to 93 um, GPA. And you could see average test scores below, but we are test optional. So really it's just personal preference as the accepted uh, rates are pretty similar for submitted and non-submitted. We would love to have you visit us. Uh, we do offer in-person visits every single day of the week that go along with an info session. We do also offer virtual programs like the one you're on right now. 
And we do also offer self-guided tour options with an audio companion. So you can tour at your leisure and know what you're looking at, which is always pretty great. And I'll send my contact details in the chat um, if you want to reach out. But like I said, for more specific information on majors and things like that, uh, you can find that on our website or email me and I would love to help you out. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for presenting on Marist College. All right, on to our next goal, we're going to be hearing from Rochester Institute of Technology. Hi, I thought I was going last, so I wasn't really prepared for that, but um, okay. Sorry, um, Molly, I thought you had heard it. Do you need to, would you like to switch? No, I'm off? okay, I'm okay. Great, thank uh, you. Okay, so let me just share my screen here. Okay, um, so my name is Molly Lane. I'm a senior assistant director um, at Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, unlike some of the other schools that you've heard from, we are not a small liberal arts school. We're actually a large, um, more STEM related um, school located in New York. Um, a little bit of um, some facts about RIT. Like I said, we're pretty large, over 16 and a half thousand students do attend our main campus. Um, you can see some different facts and figures here about the diversity on campus as far as um, students from all 50 states, students from 90 different countries. Um, and then even though we are a large school, we do offer um, small classes to students. So our average class size is about 22 students, which is very small for the size of our university. And something that makes us a little bit different too, um, we are home to one of two deaf and hard of hearing colleges in the country. Um, so we do have over a thousand students that attend RIT that are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, so many students leave RIT knowing some sign language. Um, some know a lot because we do offer not just a minor in American Sign Language, but also um, a bachelor's degree as well. Uh, so this is just kind of a um, gives you an idea of the programs that we do offer. We're obviously most well known for our STEM programs because we are an institute of technology. So we have very strong programs in the areas of engineering and computing. We have one of the largest computing colleges in the country. So we don't just have computer science. We are one of the few schools that also has software engineering, um, game design, which we're number two in the country for, uh, web and mobile computing, lots of different computing programs. Um, but we also have programs in art and design, which we are world renowned um, and recognized very highly for those, a college of business. We do have a college of liberal arts on our campus. Um, we also have health science programs. So we have a physician's assistant program, um, ultrasound. So lots of programs in different areas, over 90 different degree programs, and many are offered as minors as well, which is really nice because you can come to RIT for engineering, but then maybe do a minor in photography or a language or something um, that you have an interest in. And then I like to list, you might've already seen this um, when I was talking, some niche programs that we do offer that you really can't find at very many schools. Um, like I mentioned, American Sign Language, but we also have um, a hidden gem program called Packaging Science, um, some studio arts programs, Imaging Science, we're the only ones in the country to offer this program. Um, and then we do have accelerated um, dual degree programs where you can earn your master's degree in one year at RIT as opposed to two. And there is a list of all of our master's programs on our website if you're interested in looking at those. So one thing we would never um, forget to mention when we're talking about RIT is our cooperative education program. Many schools have co-ops and internships and you've heard those mentioned um, during the other presentations, but RIT is one of only four schools in the country that has a mandatory cooperative education program. And what that means is we actually require almost all of our students to work full time in their field as part of their degree. So they're required to take a break from their classes, take a break from paying tuition. Um, with the help of a co-op advisor, they find these co-op placements and they go out and work full time earning a full time salary. Um, these co-ops can be all over the world. We currently partner with over 3,400 companies. So lots of different opportunity. Students usually earn between 700 and $1,000 a week and that's their money to keep. Um, so if they want to use it towards the cost of their tuition or something else, that's really up to them. 
So obviously the big takeaway from this is our job placement rate. We survey all of our seniors within six months of graduating and we hear back from over 90% of them. Most students are employed full-time in their field within six months of graduating. And many of our programs actually have 100% job placement. And it's really just due to this co-op program that we offer. Um, you can find more information about the co-op program for specific majors on our website. If you just type in co-op in mechanical engineering, you'll get a page that shows a whole bunch of information about the companies we partner with, salary information, job outlook. These are some of the major companies that we partner with, but like I said, there's over 3,400, so the list is uh, pretty extensive. So uh, global opportunities, our main campus is in Rochester, New York, but we do have campuses in China, Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai. So many students take advantage of that and spend a semester taking the same classes they would in Rochester at another campus. Um, we do offer study abroad though in 55 countries if you're interested in going somewhere else. And another thing students can do is their co-op in another country. So you could work abroad versus study abroad and it still satisfies uh, part of your degree requirement. So obviously the big advantage of going to a larger school is the community once you're outside your small classes. Um, we have over 300 clubs, tons of different activities. Um, we're very busy on the weekends and the evenings. There's always things going on at RIT. Um, these are the varsity sports that we do offer. We're primarily a division three school, um, except for men's and women's ice hockey, which we are um, division one. So ice hockey is very exciting at RIT. Um, if you're not interested at, um, in playing a varsity sport, we do offer tons of different club and intramural activities. You can see some of them at least listed here. Um, so we have some really interesting things, you know, um, esports is really big, Quidditch, um, humans versus zombies, tons of different things to get involved with. Performing arts, also really big at RIT. Um, we offer a performing arts scholarship and tons of performing arts space that exists or is currently being um, added. And then these are our requirements for applying, um, pretty standard. We are test optional as well. And you can find more information on our website about um, merit scholarship, financial aid, early decision and regular decision dates as well. And um, thank you for joining me. I um, will put my contact information in the chat if you do have more questions. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much, Molly, for presenting and sharing Rochester Institute of Technology. All right, well, instead of a six by six, this is a six by seven. So we're off to our seven school. We're gonna be hearing from Mercy College. Hi everyone, I'm Janie Anderson from Mercy College. Um, I'm one of the admissions recruiters um, down on our Dobbs Ferry campus. Um, let me just share my screen here with you. All right, so um, just to start off, um, we uh, are a small private college um, in New York. We do have three campuses, one in Dobbs Ferry, one is in um, uh, the Bronx, and one is in Manhattan. So first, our Dobbs Ferry campus is our uh, main campus. Um, it's our largest campus with, where most of our students attend. Um, it is in Dobbs Ferry in Westchester. Um, and like I said, that is where most of our students uh, go. We do have dorms as well. Um, and our, we are very close to the city. So, and the train is right, right there on campus. Um, it's about a 30, 40 minute uh, train ride into Manhattan. Um, that leads me into our Manhattan campus. So our Manhattan campus is um, on 34th street, right across from Macy's. Um, it is very popular right now. I know a lot of students are, are looking to kind of be right in the city in the mix uh, while they're in college, which is great. Um, it's a really great opportunity. And we do also offer um, dorms in our Manhattan campus. Um, they're really nice, they're brand new. Um, so it's a great opportunity for any student that's interested. Um, and then we have our Bronx campus, um, which is our only campus that does not offer dorming. Um, and 
So, you know, you don't have the option to live there, but if some students do choose to take some courses in our Bronx campus, um, so that's always an option as well. Um, we do ha have five schools, um, business, liberal arts, education, social and behavioral sciences, and health and natural sciences. Um, so I think, you know, right now, one of our biggest um, things is nursing. Um, it's a very competitive program and it's our only capped program, meaning, um, you know, we only accept a certain number of nursing students, um, but it is um, a very strong program. It's one of our, our greatest and most popular programs. Um, that leads me into our PACT program. So the PACT program really is, I like to compare it to uh, like your high school guidance counselor. Um, as soon as you start at Mercy, you will be set up with um, a PACT counselor. This person will follow you all through your four years of, of college at Mercy. Um, they will help you schedule your classes. They will help you um, uh, decide on your major if you're undecided or if you wanna change your major. Um, they can help you do that as well. So they kind of serve as just like your go-to person that, um, you know, you're really going to be going to them for a lot of different things throughout your college years, um, which is really nice. It's just nice to have a, uh, a point person to be able to, to share things with or share problems with um, throughout your four years of college, because it can be a daunting uh, time of your life. Um, so we are division two um, and we offer a lot of different sports and athletics, um, men's soccer, lacrosse, basketball, and baseball, um, as well as women's soccer, um, lacrosse, basketball, softball, field hockey, and volleyball. Um, along with that, we do also offer clubs, organizations, um, and different things like that. Our tuition is 20,000 a year. Um, which as you can see is um, a lot le less <laughs> costly than a lot of uh, similar schools to ours. Um, you know, with that being said, it's still a large cost and we do also uh, encourage everyone to uh, apply for financial aid. Our Mercy Scholars Program is also a great program. Um, and it's something that if you're eligible for um, would be something to definitely look into for, for certain students. We encourage all students to apply at mercy.edu. Um, you can apply at, at mercy.edu or you can also apply on the Common App. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. My information is in the chat. Um, and then also I can give out our fee waiver today, which is MAVS 2022. That's M-A-V-S 2022. Um, so if you go to apply, please use our fee waiver code um, and feel free to contact us. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing Mercy College. All right. Well, this has been one of the best and uh, most efficient and awesome uh, strive scan sessions I've ever been a part of. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Um, since we have just a couple minutes uh, left, since we have seven groups, I want to invite everybody back on camera. I would love to squish in one group Q and A so everyone can think of. Um, I didn't know if we'd have time, but but we're going to make it work. So. You admissions counselors are the biggest pros in the admissions process and helping students and their families navigate it. So I would love to hear from each of you one of your top quickest tips for uh, the college search process for any, um, anyone who's currently going through that right now. So I'm going to share my screen too so you can see the question. Um, we'll go in the exact same order that you presented. So we'll start with Albany. So Kevin will start you off and then we'll just go all the way down to Mercy. When the person ahead of you finishes, just turn on your microphone and answer away. I won't call on you between them. But what's a, a top quick tip? Kevin, take it away. That's everything from ask questions, attend sessions, visit, read and respond to emails. The more attentive you are, the more informed you'll be and the better decision you'll be, you'll make and you'll be more comfortable with that decision as well. I will uh, support that fully and just add visit visit on top of visit. So 
My piece of advice is, is sort of like that as well. Um, I would say visit, make sure that you are looking at the area in which, um, in which you want to uh, possibly be a part of. Um, I think coming, coming off of actually my, my time that I was in college is, was 10 years ago. Um, so it's cool that I'm helping students um, go into college 10 years after, but um, don't be so set on your major. Um, actually kind of get out there and see what life is like around campus and inside of campus, because you could change your mind a whole bunch of times. You, you probably will, and that's okay. Um, make sure that where you are is going to feel like home for four years, whether you're in the major that you're that on right now or not. Yeah, I agree with everybody. I think location is super important. How far away you want to be from home, the weather, people don't forget it, but you know, Family's not going to be telling you to bring a raincoat or bring a jacket. Um, also create an email that you can use just for college, because um, we find a lot of times that students use their school email, which is awesome. But after high school is over, that email kind of doesn't work anymore. Um, and it's hard to get a hold of you. Um, so definitely make sure you make a different email address just to use for college, and it'll keep everything in check for you as well. I'll take a slightly different angle. I. Um... I just graduated in May, so I did this like four years ago, and I saw a lot of my friends make, I don't want to call this a mistake, but one of the things that I noticed was, or really, I'll start with the advice. I would say to make sure that when you're looking at colleges, you're looking for yourself and not because your friends are going there or because you know a lot of people there or like in the area or anything like that. You want to go into it with an open mind because this is really the first time that you get to choose what you want to do. And you don't really want to let that decision be influenced by the people around you because they might have different goals. And I don't think it'd be fair to yourself to potentially limit what you want to do just for comfort. You know, you're going to make friends, you're going to meet a bunch of new people. So I wouldn't really worry about it and just make sure that you put yourself first. Um, I also second the separate email for colleges. You're going to get tons of emails from colleges, and I think having those in one separate email is more efficient. Um, I also feel like you should try to enjoy the process as much as possible. It can be stressful, but um, you know it's it's an important part of your life, and I think you should enjoy it. And also, don't feel like there's one perfect college for you. I'm sure there's a few, and if you keep a list of what's important to you, there will be a few that that meet those criteria. Um, I'm going to agree and just say, yes, definitely try to enjoy yourself. Um, just because it's a huge part of your life. Um, but also keep in mind that you do want to get a job, uh, after college. Um, and that's the main goal. So don't forget about that while you're looking at colleges. Really love the variety of tips and I love seeing the head nod. So I hope that shows everyone watching that these are really some of the best tips um, to help guide you in the process and that these admission counselors are welcoming, approachable people. There's no question too big or too small to ask them. They want to connect with you and they want to help you learn more because remember, this is just six minutes. It's a sneak peek of what every school has to offer. There's so much more to learn. I hope that maybe one location or one school drew you here, but you're actually saying, wait a second, I have to check out seven schools now because they all have something awesome to offer um, and could help guide you to your next future step. So thanks again, everyone, for being here. To all of our representatives, you shared not just the facts and figures, but the passion, the excitement you have for your students' experiences in and out of the classroom, and um, how much you really enjoy working with prospective students and their families. To everyone watching, whether live or um, on the recording, we really hope this is making an impact and a difference in your college search process. All right, here's the logistics. When you close the window, there's going to be a very quick five question survey. I promise students it is really short. We'd appreciate your feedback. We also um, want to remind you that this session has been recorded as all the sessions for the CASDA programming tonight. We hope that you will head to the same website where you registered to uh, check out all these session recordings. Watch again, share with friends or family and maybe explore other schools that you didn't get a chance to see tonight. Again, that website is strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S. D-A-N-Y. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. All the best in this new year. Happy 2020. Bye. Thanks, Jennifer. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank